Jai Shri Krishna, embellishing text 19, text 20, text 21 and text 22 of chapter 17, punishment and reward of Kali of first and creation of Shri Bhagavatam. Text 19, Kechida Vikalpa Vasana Ahurata Mana Mata Manaha Daiva Manye Apare Karma Swabhavam Pare Prabhu. Some of the philosophers who deny all sorts of duality declare that one's own self is responsible for his personal happiness and distress. Others say that superhuman powers are responsible, while yet others say that activity is responsible. And the gross materialists maintain that nature is the ultimate cause. As referred to above, philosophers like Jaimini and his followers established that fructive activity is the root cause of all distress and happiness and that even if there is a superior authority, some superhuman powerful god or gods, he or they are also under the influence of fructive activity because they reward result according to one's action. They say that action is not independent because action is performed by the performer, therefore the performer himself is the cause of his own happiness or distress. In the Bhagavad Gita 6.5 also it is confirmed that by one's mind, freed from material affection, one can deliver himself from the sufferings of material pangs. So one should not entangle oneself in matter by the mind's material affections. Thus one's own mind is one's friend or enemy in one's material happiness and distress. Atheistic, materialistic, some kids conclude that material nature is the cause of all causes. According to them, combinations of material elements are the causes of material happiness and distress. And disintegration of matter is the cause of freedom from all material pangs. Gautam and Kannada find that Atomic combination is the cause of everything and impersonalists like Ashtavakra discover that the spiritual effulgence of Brahma is the cause of all causes. But in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord himself declares that he is the source of impersonal Brahma and therefore he, the personality of Godhead, is the ultimate cause of all causes. It is also confirmed in the Brahma Samhita that Lord Krishna is the ultimate cause of all causes. Text 20 Apratarkya Danir Deshaditi Keshavapi Nishchayaha Atranu Rupam Rajarshe Vimrusha Svamanishaya. There are also some thinkers who believe that no one can ascertain the cause of distress by argumentation, nor know it by imagination, nor express it by words. O sage amongst kings, judge for yourself by thinking over all this with your own intelligence. The Vaishnavites, the devotees of the Lord do believe, as above explained, that nothing can take place without the sanction of the Lord. He is the supreme director for he confirms in the Bhagavad Gita 15.15 that he, as all pervading Paramatma, stays in everyone's heart and keeps vigilance over all actions and witnesses all activities. The argument of the atheist that one cannot be punished for one's misdeeds unless proof before a qualified justice is refuted herein as we accept the perpetual witness and constant companion of the living being. A living being may forget all that he might have done in his past or present life, but one must know that in the same tree of the material body, the individual soul and the supreme soul as Paramatma are sitting like two birds. One of them, the living being, is enjoying the fruits of the tree while the supreme being is there to witness the activities. Therefore, the Paramatma feature, the supreme soul, is actually the witness of all activities of the living being and only by his direction can the living being remember or forget what he might have done in the past. He is therefore both the all-pervading impersonal Brahma and the localized Paramatma in everyone's heart. He is the knower of all past, present and future and nothing can be concealed from him. The devotees know this truth and therefore they discharge their duties sincerely without being overly anxious for rewards. Besides that, one cannot estimate the Lord's reactions either by speculation or by scholarship. Why does he put some into difficulty and not others? He is the supreme knower of the Vedic knowledge and thus he is the factual Vedantist. At the same time, he is the compiler of the Vedanta. No one is independent of him and everyone is engaged in his service in different ways. In the conditioned state, such services are rendered by the living being under forces.
pursuit of the material nature, whereas in the liberated state, the living being is held by the spiritual nature in the voluntary loving service of the Lord. There is no incongruity or inability in his actions. All are on the path of absolute truth. Bhishma Dev correctly estimated the inconceivable actions of the Lord. The conclusion is therefore that the sufferings of the representative of religion and the representative of the earth as present before Maharaj Parikshit were planned to prove that Maharaj Parikshit was the ideal executive head because he knew well how to give protection to the cows, the earth and the Brahmana's religious principles, the two pillars of spiritual advancement. Everyone is under the full control of the Lord. He is quite correct in his actions when he desires something to be done by someone irrespective of the consideration of the particular case. Maharaj Parikshit was thus put to test for his greatness. Now let us see how he solves it by his sagacious mind. Text 21. Sutta Uvacha Evam Dharme Pravadati Sa Samrata Dvija Sattamaha Samahiten Manasa Vikhedaha Parya Chashtatama. Sutta Goswami said, O best among the Brahmanas, the Emperor Parikshit thus hearing the personality of religion speak was fully satisfied and without mistake or regret, he gave his reply. The statement of the bull, the personality of religion, was full of philosophy and knowledge and the king was satisfied since he could understand that the suffering bull was not an ordinary one. Unless one is perfectly conversant with the law of the Supreme Lord, one cannot speak such things touching philosophical truths. The king being also on an equal level of sagacity, replied to the point without doubts or mistakes. Text 22, Rajo Vacha Dharma Bravishi Dharmadnya Dharmo Asi Vrusha Rupa Dhruka Yada Dharma Kritaha Sthanam Suchak Syapi Tad Bhavet The king said, O you who are in the form of a bull, you know the truth of religion and you are speaking according to the principles that the destination intended for the perpetrator of irreligious acts is also intended for one who identifies the perpetrator. You are no other than the personality of religion. A devotee's conclusion is that no one is directly responsible for being a benefactor or mischief monger without the sanction of the Lord. Therefore, he does not consider anyone to be directly responsible for such action. But in both the cases, he takes it for granted that either benefit or loss is God sent and thus it is his grace. In case of benefit, no one will deny that it is God sent and in case of loss or reverses, one becomes doubtful about how the Lord could be so unkind to his devotee as to put him in great difficulty. Prahlad Maharaj was seemingly put into such great difficulty, being crucified by the ignorant but he was never angry on the mischief mongers. That is the way of accepting a thing either favourable or unfavourable. Thus, for a devotee, the identifier is equal a sinner like the mischief monger. By God's grace, the devotee tolerates all reverses. Maharaj Parikshit observed this and therefore he could understand that the bull was no other than the personality of religion himself. In other words, a devotee has no suffering at all because so-called suffering is also God's grace for a devotee who sees God in everything. The cow and bull never placed any complaint before the king for being tortured by the personality of Kali, although everyone lodges such complaints before the state authorities. The extraordinary behavior of the bull made the king conclude that the bull was certainly the personality of religion, for no one else could understand the finer intricacies of the codes of religion. Hare Krishna.